After recently seeing gas rise to $4 a gallon, more attention is drawn to alternative fuels. Alternative fuels and energy independence are big topics this presidential election as well. But when will they really become a reality? That's the question many of us want to know. Way 31's Laura Beth Ezel goes in-depth to find out. The United States has had the technology to create alternative fuels for the past 30 years. But it's not until the last few years that the state and federal governments have begun rallying behind local farmers and universities to make alternative fuels a reality and tell foreign countries thanks but no thanks. The United States imports 65% of its oil. That's a billion dollars a day America sends overseas. And oil prices are unpredictable. The Energy Information Administration shows in February 1998, a barrel of oil was $9.31. In February 2008, a barrel was $100, a 974% increase. The price is down for now, but the question is whether it will last. That's why some are turning to alternative fuels like ethanol and biodiesel. These are renewable alternatives for fuel and energy, and we don't know when the petroleum or oil supply will run out. Ethanol and biodiesel are the two major alternative fuels on the market. Ethanol, or E85, is a mixture of 85% ethanol and 15% gasoline. Biodiesel can be a B20 or B100 mixture. B20 is 20% biodiesel and 80% gasoline. Or B100, that's 100% biodiesel. Auburn University is allocating millions of dollars in building new research and development laboratories to find Alabama's best natural resource to produce alternative fuels. We can do work that really advances um, the, the technology and advances the capability to create uh, biofuels and bioenergy in, in a more effective way. Here are some options. We have corn, switchgrass, and wood chips. These are known as biofeedstocks that can produce ethanol. Then we have canola, sunflower seeds, and soybeans that can produce biodiesel. Unlike gasoline, all of these are renewable sources of energy that can be regrown every year right here on American soil, not in foreign countries. And it is going to take a whole range of different uh, uh, biomaterials in order for us to uh, become energy independent. But not every state will use the same biofeedstock. Auburn University's Larry Filmer says each state has its own natural resource. While corn is easier for the Midwest to grow, two-thirds of Alabama is covered in forest. There are 15 million tons of wood waste in Alabama that can produce enough fuel for the entire state. Wood waste is what's left over from paper mills or those tree limbs you set out for the city to pick up. That's what surprises people, that, that we can take a tree and make diesel fuel out of it. Stephen Taylor is the director for bioenergy and bioproducts at Auburn. Taylor is developing various bioenergy programs on campus. Students are interested, and then we're trying to address those needs. The university is using this mobile gasification unit to show how wood chips can be turned into a gas. The gas can be used as electricity or turned into a liquid, thus creating ethanol. Wood will soon be Alabama's alternative fuel resource. The test now is to build the infrastructure to collect the waste, the facilities to process it, and gas stations to sell it. We know a lot, and we know the technology is how to make a synthetic diesel fuel. We know how to do that. Our, our challenge is how to do that cost effectively, and that's just going to take us a little bit of time uh, to, make that, to make that transition. And tomorrow night, we will show you a biodiesel production facility that produces biodiesel in Athens. See how it works and why your cooking oil is a huge contributing factor. Karen?